Um, one of the uh, first Pathfinder astronauts that was selected um, in 2009. Uh, Teacher in Space is a new program. It's not necessarily run by NASA anymore, although when you kind of see us a little bit, you'll see that most of us have some type of NASA ties. I'm also on a, a fellowship with NASA through the Endeavor program, and I'm also on the national board for NSTA as uh, the aerospace advisor. Um, it's really an exciting program that has started now with the advent of commercial space flights. And I think if you follow commercial space flights, you'll realize that uh, it's a new, obviously a new endeavor that's out there. And Teachers in Space, as we'll talk here real quick, I'll give you a brief overview, and then I'll talk about some of the training we've done and things like that. So what is Teachers in Space? Basically, Teachers in Space is a program that's now out of NASA's hands, although NASA does have uh, education, uh, educators in space and educator astronauts, but there's only a few of them, and they're not going back into the classroom. The uh, goal for Teachers in Space is to put teachers up into space in suborbital flights, take an experiment up with your, uh, either designed by your students or by NASA or by one of the companies, and then you come back and you go right back in the classroom. Most of my time is spent in the classroom, although I did have, uh, over the last year, um, I think I had about 50 speaking engagements throughout the uh, Cincinnati area, so I was a little busy. And I have a great boss, Dr. Farrell's my superintendent, and he realizes that uh, if, if I get to go out and speak, it's a really a great thing for the district, too. Um, the goal is to honor the uh, teacher, inspire students, and spur the interest in math, science, and space exploration, the STEM classes, basically. In uh, 2009, seven teachers were selected to begin for suborbital training. We'll let you see some of the training videos. Some were quite humorous, uh, and they are also called Pathfinder astronauts. Uh, the good news is this summer, while we're in Washington, D.C., uh, we announced that we're going to be looking for three more teachers to join our ranks and get us up to the number of 10. Um, as a side note, there are 15 current flights that have been donated to the Teacher in Space program, and we expect the flights to start hopefully next year, uh, next summer. This is the current uh, seven. Uh, very quickly, um, there are four uh, teachers from, um, let's see, well, I guess the best thing to do is just introduce everybody. This is Maureen Adams. Uh, Maureen is a, uh, was a science teacher, now she's a principal in Killeen, Texas. Uh, Mike Schmidt is the next one with the beard and the glasses. Mike's in Arizona. He is our only math teacher right now. Uh, the lady in the front is Chantel, and some of you will meet her this weekend, and she'll be here on Saturday. Saturday. She's also a uh, teacher in Ohio from St. Paris. In the back, in the glasses, is Jim Cool. Jim is a middle school science teacher in New York. Um, Rachel Mounds are here. She's from Connecticut. She is a, a STEM teacher in a magnet school. Uh, that's me. I'm in the, kind of in the back there a little bit. Uh, my career, I spent 20 years in the Air Force. I was an Air Force pilot. And uh, when I got out of in the Air Force, I worked at UC for three years in the Department of Aerospace uh, Studies. I was the department chairman. Then I got into public education. In, in Milford, and I've been there ever since. Next year, I get a real good challenge because I'm not, besides doing earth science, I'm also going to pick up some math classes. And uh, our last candidate right here is Lynette Oliver. And Lynette is in, uh, right now, she's transferring from, well, I think she probably already finished with her transfer. She's going to be in Alaska, and she'll be up there teaching in uh, Elmendorf. So that's us. Um, we first started training out uh, in 2009 out in uh, California, and the very first thing we decided to train with was glider flights. And uh, got to meet uh, Shuttle Commander Colonel Rick Serfoss, and you know, you, you talk to your students about how to get inspired. This is a great way of getting inspired. Um, they were all laughing at me because they asked, well, what is he doing? I said, well, that's a calculus class, and good, lucky me, I got to sit through a calculus class with uh, one of the best in the world at what he does. Colonel Serforce has uh, more hours in space than I think most astronauts have. Uh, he is working right now for x -Corps, and that's one of the companies that uh, have donated flights to us. And uh, the, uh, as we went out and talked together, his uh, inspiration to me was that the uh, space flight for uh, suborbital flight consists of actually three phases the takeoff phase, the, uh, the orbit phase, and then, of course, returning to Earth. And everything returns to Earth now is a glider. So he wanted to make sure we all understood what glider principles were and what, the, uh, what it would be like to, f to come back from a suborbital flight. Max flight time is about an hour and 30 minutes, and you'll be in space for about 10 minutes. And in that 10-minute period, you get to do your experiment. But uh, we flew the first day together, and it was kind of funny because two, two Air Force colonels flying together, sometimes it's not necessarily safe. Um, this is where we were out in Mojave. Uh, that's me in the red hat getting in. And of course, one thing I learned very quickly is that you get your picture taken doing everything. And it was a, a constant sitting in the heat out there. It's 120 on the ramp out there, 
when we flew. And I had been out to Mojave since I flew out of Edwards Air Force Base many years ago. I'd forgotten how hot it can be. Of course, we didn't dress appropriately. Later on, I realized that you just wear your flight suit. Don't, don't dress underneath anything. But uh, I did bring a video of my flight. And we'll see if that comes up really quick here with quick time. as it's coming up. The, if you have questions anytime, just feel free to ask. I don't mind taking questions during the talk. Um, hopefully this will come up. If not, at the end, I'll show you all the videos at the end. But uh, oh, here we go. One of the first things we actually did, oh, here we go, was I found out that glider flight is a whole lot different than um, uh, powered flight. And uh, Cole Searfoss here was doing some video for us too. Basically, he's introducing himself and talking about flying with teacher in space. And uh, as it catches up here, he, one of his big things was you got to have some way of motivating the students. And uh, one of the things I do now is I take all of my videos and all my training stuff back to the classroom. Just got my scores back from the most recent uh, how tests. And uh, my superintendent is a really big uh, believer in what I'm doing now. Um, this is me flying. Um, I hadn't flown in a while. And uh, as you could tell, we have the state-of-the-art instruments. That's our turn slip indicator right there, uh, trying to do it. One thing um, I, I realized, too, that in glider flight is as we come through, um, that's Rick's house. He wanted me to make sure I knew where he lived. So we had to do a turnover. But we're getting ready to land here. And what I talk about the kids is we take a class here very quickly and talk about altitude and where you need to be and how do you need to know to be there and things like that. Um, so we try to apply everything that I have back into the classroom right away. The good news for me is uh, this year is the first year Milford, at least the junior high level, passed the science test. And our scores were unbelievable. I think uh, most of my classes were well above 85% pass. And of that, most of the kids actually, had, uh, actually did the accelerated or had advanced scores. So I was really thrilled. And my reward for that is now I get to teach math, too. So you know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this was a very kind of neat thing for me. This is when uh, Colonel Surforce gave me my little astronaut wings here that goes with it. And uh, he reminded me that I needed to wear my Air Force wings, too. So after that point, uh, he was uh, really great. But uh, this is who I'll be flying with if I get to go with x -Corps. And uh, he and I have talked off and on during things. And uh, I'm really excited about it. And the kids always laugh. And they say, are you never not happy? And I keep trying to remind him that when you live your dreams and you get a chance to do this kind of stuff, it's pretty neat. There's one of my favorite pictures. My grandson thinks I'm pretty cool now, too. That always helps. Yeah. yeah. Next day, we went down to um, this place called uh, Sky Thrills. It's a top gun school that's down in, uh, off, off the, uh, uh, in Los Angeles. And, uh, you, they actually do come to Cincinnati, too. Um, they'll come here, and they'll, you can actually go up and train with them, and they'll teach you the maneuvers of flight. I thought when we first sat there, I tell my kids that uh, after the first discussion, I decided I better sit in the front row being a good student, I wanted to be up front because everything the man was saying was very important to me, especially when he started giving me a parachute. <laughs> and there I am. Uh, the neat thing about it, talk about uh, one of the things one of the kids asked me, which is, why are you wearing a Kevlar vest? And I said, well, it was very hot out there. We took the Kevlar out and we stuck ice packs in it. And I was able to wear an ice pack vest. Uh, and uh, this is the guy I flew with, Don's over there. We're getting ready to fly. Once again, two Air Force guys getting ready to fly together was kind of interesting. Um, this is the one picture my superintendent always, I have to show, Milford is the Eagles. So that's his promotion picture there. Uh, that's the one he has up in his office now. And, uh, but it was really, it's really the only way to fly. It was a great way to get back into it. Um, I did bring the video of that a little bit too. It's kind of humorous. Uh, the kids like it because they get to see me pull six G's and it's like an instant facelift. So we'll kind of show you that too. Uh, one of the neat things about the program is we are letting teachers actually train to do all these things. So with, I was lucky I had a lot of experience doing some of these things. Most of the teachers had not ever flown an airplane by themselves, you know, with someone before, other than just going through airliners and things like that. So this is Jim, and uh, he's in a pit special, and the guy was teaching him how to do just basic roles and basic maneuvers. And I thought for sure we were all doing the same things. And we'll kind of look at it. I was in a little different airplane. Uh, they're in a pit special. You can tell by the canopy, and you can kind of look back, and you can see the, uh, the little knobs on the thing kind of gives you an indication of how he is flying level. When you see mine, you'll see it's a little bit different. This is Rachel, very first time she had a chance of flying. And you can see the pits is a biplane. Great pictures over the coast of uh, California. And we, this building confidence about flying was one of the biggest things here. You know, how to feel comfortable flying, how to feel safe flying, things like that. Okay? Uh, 
And you know, just basic maneuvers that you would do. Uh, with the links, uh, take off, you put, go to Mach 2 within the first couple seconds after, after take off. Uh, Mike was the first time he flew, and uh, Mike was real excited about getting a chance to do this. You'll get a chance to see this. So I'm going to pause there because my kids, I didn't know uh, too much about Facebook. I didn't know a lot about posting videos and stuff like that. My two sons are really good at this. And when I got back, I realized that everybody in my family had seen me fly. I thought it was going to be a surprise, some of the things. But uh, when you get a chance, you'll see this. I got kind of set up a little bit. Uh, they did all these really nice things. It was a lot of fun. And then all of a sudden, what you're going to see then is uh, <laughs> I, I actually got into a, it's an Air A300. It's a little bit different airplane, a little bit more. It's one of the air show airplanes they use. And the very first thing we did is we decided, he said, well, you know, let's see what your you know, macho guys, right? Uh, I started yanking pretty hard. So here's what 6Gs looks like going straight up. So you can see a little bit different cockpit. Here's six, let's see, it'll catch up here in a second. But this is what 6Gs will look like. Oops. Yep, let me back that out, they kind of caught it there. We also did, a, I, I tried to do an experiment for the kids while we were flying to show them what zero gravity looked like. And the big discussion we got is when I was spinning the water bottle, because it hung there, did the, did the water bottle move or did the airplane move? You know, and that was the big discussion we had. And I tried to, it was hard to convince them that the water bottle did not move. It was the movement of the airplane. Here we go, six Gs. And we're going straight up now. And then, of course, the neat thing was we go zero. And that's when I started playing with the water bottle. So there it is, and it went to the back, and then we kind of played it front and back a little bit. But uh, so the kids, you know, I didn't, one thing I've learned, this is Chantel. She'll be here on Saturday. And they let her kind of throw it up in the air, too, a little bit, and it goes straight to the back. So we talk a little bit about that, uh, the difference of flight parameters in that in class. Um, then we went out to the National Test Pilot School. There are two test pilot schools. Uh, I, I, I was fortunate when I was in the airport to, Air Force to be out at Edwards, where uh, the Jaeger School is and things like that, where the test pilot school was. But right across in Mojave, they have the uh, Civilian Test Pilot School. And the Civilian Test Pilot School was really kind of neat because they bring people in from all different walks of life, um, aviators, to actually learn how to test airplanes that corporations fly. I had not seen one of these since my time in the Air Force. This is a, a Swedish airplane over here. It's, a, it's a, called a Draken for Dragon. It's a Mach 3 airplane. And I was hoping they were going to let me go fly, but they said no. You know, a little disappointed. Um, this is one of the neatest moments that I've had, at least in the local area. Uh, we were out there and we were talking to all these corporations that are building the next generation for the shuttles, next generation of the landers. And this is Mass in Space. This is Dave Mass and the president. And at the time, um, this was early in their development. Um, you can see a very rudimentary uh, lander that they were working on. This lander actually won a million dollars from uh, NASA in one of their big prizes and uh, for the lunar landing. But uh, one of the things that I, I didn't realize is the young gentleman here in the uh, green was from University of Cincinnati, aeronautical engineering student. I thought, wow, this is pretty neat. So he and I talked a little bit. I go up to Lakota West High School here, uh, just south of here a little bit, in, uh, near Cincinnati. And I'm sitting there talking about all this stuff. And there's three teachers in the back of the room had him in class. And they said, we know who that is. And I said, really? He goes, yeah, he was one of our students here. So here we are out in the middle of California, in the middle of the desert, in this small little hangar. And I walked in, and there's a University of Cincinnati kid, and I thought that was cool. Then I'm going to go talk to teachers, and teachers say, we had that kid in class. And he's there on the cutting edge of the new technology now, which is kind of nice. Uh, this is the group that uh, is a good chance that this is Mike Masson, and Mike's their uh, uh, promotion guy from uh, XCOR. This is the Lynx, and if you can look at the Lynx, it's, it is an aircraft. Um, suborbital flights, there's two different ways of looking at it right now. One is through uh, Virgin Galactic, which is the uh, White Knight 2 that is actually flying the Enterprise. And I read uh, yesterday morning before uh, I was waiting in the doctor's office that they had actually flown a crew mission in the new Enterprise. And that is really exciting for us. Um, this is the other version of it. This is the Lynx. This is run by x -Corp and the Lynx. They're great. I, I have a really good working relationship with them. We did a class last year um, on, on design. And I challenged my students with, can you design the next shuttle? And uh, to let them talk to people that are actually doing it, we did a Skype session with the uh, with XCOR, and it was really great for the kids to get a chance to talk about why is this design important. And of course, the good news for them too is, as we're sitting there, um, they got to look at how the engine is designed. They got to see how uh, the cockpit is being designed. 
and they actually got to talk to the people that are actually developing it. Some of this is the wind tunnel that they uh, test. Uh,